Hello YouTubers, welcome to vlog number 38. Today, as you can probably tell, my voice is a bit better. On top of my throat feeling better too. Not 100%, so I still have to be careful. But it's definitely on the mend and I'm thinking about venturing outside the house today. Unfortunately, it's raining, so I'm going to go down to the shops because I need some milk, obviously. I need to go get that milk. And my mum's coming down this weekend, so we're going to get some stuff for that. Uh, she, I think she was feeling a bit bad for not coming down when I had the surgery, but I'm a big boy, I can take care of myself. Apart from that, I've got a couple of things to do on the computer. Played Fortnite this morning, a couple of good games. Still figuring out there was screen recording and my voice is getting better for that, so hopefully eventually we'll get some games played with some followers, some subscribers, so that'll be exciting. So apart from that, I'm going to get ready, grab a bit of food and head out. Get some milk. Oh yeah. Got my leftovers just get being heated up in the microwave. Some teriyaki pork with chorizo, rice and broccoli. One thing I thought was really interesting, uh, a lot of people I was talking to when I getting tonsils out, it's like, nah, ice cream. Don't eat like hard things, don't eat salty things, don't eat um, acidic stuff. Which all makes sense, because you're getting stuff chopped out of your throat. But I think I've been really lucky. Uh, I've got them taken out. The surgeon was saying, just eat as normally as you can. It was painful, obviously, trying to avoid some stuff, but eat as normally as you can. At the very least, I'll try and prevent you to lose some weight. Already lost weight anyway from not training, and I've been very lucky, like I said. So I'm eating very close to normally. I haven't done had any acidic stuff, or especially salty stuff, but Everything I've had so far hasn't caused many issues. I mean, the half an hour after the surgery, or an hour after the surgery, I was already eaten. The surgeon was just encouraging me to eat as, as well as I can. He was like, oh, well, maybe not so as far as the crackers and crisps and all that to, to like grind away the, the scabs or whatever. But just normal as possible. And like I said, oh, and there is my food ready to be eaten. So eating away at the food and then we'll head into food shop and grab some milk and maybe some other things. But that'll be it. And it's still not a nice day, still raining outside so can't win them all. Let's get driving. And this is a lovely wet day that's been made it out the house. Getting into the Yaris. Probably just go down to food shop closer. Nice easy journey. Keep away from everyone. <laughs> and uh, back to the house with some milk. Okay, let's get driving. As per usual, the Waitrose car park is very busy, so I eventually found a space. Yep, just gonna nip in and out for some milk and then uh, back to the house. Let's go get that milk. Located the milk. While I'm here, I'll get some pastry and some butter to make some rhubarb and apple pie. Wah, made it in the car. And now we go back to the house. And welcome back to the house. <clears throat> Since I've got the pastry and the butter now to make the apple and rhubarb pie, why not get to it? I'm actually not sure about how old the rhubarb and apple is. We need to check that first. But if it's all good, let's get to making a pie. Step one to every recipe, getting all the ingredients together. So I'm going to just go and collect all the ingredients for the apple and rhubarb pie. We're gonna need some brown sugar, some cinnamon, butter, unsalted, a little bit of salt, so maybe it's better to do salted butter. Uh, I've just got some short crust pastry that you can buy in a pack, just makes it really easy. Uh, rhubarb apple or any filling of your choice. I think that's it, so it's really, really simple. Let's get to it. Oh, 
Okay, so that's me got my ingredients. It was not so much brown sugar, golden castor sugar. So a finer, light brown sugar. Okay, so first get the chop and peel the apples, the decor, cored apples, peel the apples, chop the rhubarb. All right, let's get to that. One thing you can do as well while you're chopping all the ingredients and peeling the apples, coring the apples, each bit you get, put it into a bowl with some water and with some sugar so it can sit in there and get a lot sweeter before you put it in. So I'll put, what I'll be doing is add some cinnamon in there as well. So chop and peel the rhubarb and apple into a bowl with some sugar, with some cinnamon. Let that sit as I'm doing all that and getting the pastry ready as well. Next stage. And then just roughly chop all the rhubarb. There we go. Just we'll stick that into the bowl. What I'll also do at this stage is so to moisten the bits up is rinse in a bit of water. So we'll go over to the sink. And go from the there, add some of the sugar, just a rough amount. I'm pretty much not measuring anything here. And then add some cinnamon as well to there. And I cut myself while peeling, of course. So blood everywhere. Put the apples into the sugar and cinnamon bowl, and now we go on to the pastry. So the pastry, to make it easier, Adam is now back, trying to scavenge food from the house. Yes. To make the pastry process easier, just take some flour and just send it absolutely everywhere. <laughs> on your rolling pin, on the pastry, on the roof. The more flour the better. What I'll do as well before putting the pastry into the cake tin, take a stick of butter and just put the butter all over the cake tin. Now to do the cinnamon sugar crumbly mix that goes in with the fruit. Sugar, flour. I'm doing it one handed because I've cut my finger. It's a bit of a process if you've got one hand. But basically rubbing together the butter, flour and sugar until it becomes a sort of crumbly, messy thing. And looks like I've not added enough butter, so more butter. And while we are at this process, you can preheat the oven. I'll just sit at like 160, 170. And a fan assisted oven, your oven may vary. So you don't want it to be like a dough, but you want sort of little bits of dough mixture. Okay, so this is what I'm looking for. This sort of crumbly mixture. So now to add it all together, what I'll do is get the pie right here, get the pie, add the fruit, and what I'll do is add a little bit of the mixture to the bottom of the pie, add a little bit of mixture to the fruit, take the, some of the fruit, add it to the pie, about half-ish, just over half, and take a lot of the crumbly mix, add that in. Just make sure it's all in there. Then get the rest of the fruit and add that in. There we go and the rest of the mix, see if it even fits in. 
Which it does, love. Okay, excellent. Now we're going to take the rest of the corners of the pie, turn it over. And why not just add some bits here? Just some spare bits of pastry. So, as you can see, this is a very rough recipe, but it tastes delicious. Really simple to do, just a bit messy. And let's get it in. I'll wash my hands. Let's get it into the oven. Sort of middle rack of the oven, and it's at 160, 170. Put it in for half an hour to start, just and then check where it is. Want it to be sort of golden brown, nice and crispy on the outside. And if it needs longer, it needs longer. We'll soon find out. Okay, so cleaning up, getting rid of all the mess. Be back when the pie is done. And as you can hear, the pie is ready. Now to just remove it from the oven. But I need an oven glove and another plate. So don't spill it everywhere. Plate. Oven off. Need the special glove. I think that looks pretty good. Let's Let's get straight in, shall we? So I'll take off the side and just dig straight in and add some ice cream. Absolutely fantastic. And what about that? Ideal. So, all the syrup, all the sugar, the butter has all melted and become a syrupy goodness. So it's not exactly the easiest to serve up, but... Wow, we smells delicious. Let's give it a taste. It tastes really good, especially with some ice cream. Oh my goodness. Mm. That'll be it for the vlog today. Hope you enjoyed a little trip to get some milk. How to make an apple and rhubarb pie. Remember, if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button and comment below if you would like to see me take on other recipes. Once my throat heat does heal up, we'd like to get a bit more hype into it as well. So that'll be a bit more entertaining, but hope you enjoyed this recipe, nice and easy. A bit rough and ready, but works and it's really good. Have a good one.